In today's video, we're going to be doing a how-to guide on how to play Tag Raid, along with a little bit of a battle report using the opening mission that is the example in the rulebook. In this particular mission, we're going to be playing with four factions, each with one tag. So we have the Rock Eater Tag, the Tafeng, Stonebreaker, and the Cave Crawler. These four tags will be fighting it out on this map here. You'll notice there are three spaces here, here, and here. These block line of sight, and this is where the storeworm will be making its appearance and fighting the tags as well. As you can see, there's also a lot of scenery on the table as well, along with some supply crates where the tags can get better equipment. There are also deployment zones all around the table, marking a roll that you would make every time that you deploy your tags. So in the games of tag raid, this is what we're fighting for, TCM. Once we can get enough TCM, we're gonna win the game. So basically we have up to possibly eight turns to try and get 12 TCM by the end of a game turn. Once that happens, the game is over and the person with 12 wins. Either that or we run out of turns and the person with the most TCM wins as well. Not just TCM, but you can also get t bazaar which is represented by these orange pieces here. This is the stuff found inside the Mega Beasts. So as we wound the Mega Beast, we are going to be getting t bazaar which is this. Anyone who actually defeats the Mega Beast will also get three extra t bazaar as a hunting trophy. Because we've got a Mega Beast, we are going to be having this Mega Beast deck here. This is going to tell us what's going to happen at the beginning of a turn when the Mega Beast is in play. Now, also, this is basically the game rounds. Something special will happen every single game round. There is a large deck of these, but I pre-shuffled these and I took out eight. With eight cards there, that's what you use for the game. As soon as these finish and run out, the game is over. Here as well is what the Mega Beast's actions are. So when they take an ARO action, which is an automatic reaction order, uh, in response to someone else doing something in front of them, then they're gonna take a card from here and do the action on this. We'll go over how the cards work a little bit more in detail later. But first, we've gotta decide the order of play. Now, to do that, we have these lovely cards here. So we're gonna take these cards and we're gonna shuffle them. Hard to shuffle one-handed while holding a camera. I have shuffled them off camera and we're going to draw to see who is going to be playing first in the timeline. So at the top of the timeline, we have Rocker Works. They're gonna be the first ones to have a go. Second place, we have the Tough Feng. Uh, in third on the timeline, we have the Stonebreaker, which leaves in last place the Cave Crawler in last there. Now. With a four player game, the third and fourth player get to start with a little bit of extra help. So the Stonebreaker is going to be getting one extra TCM and the Cave Crawler will get two. First of all, we need to see where the Rockerworks Rock Eater is going to be deployed. One. So they'll be setting up right here. Next we have the Tafeng. Where is the Tafeng going to be set up? Let's see. 12. 12 is literally the other side of the board. And when we're setting up, we always place them right at the edge of the hexagon that they're coming in on, uh, where the uh, deployment arrow is. Next is going to be the Stonebreaker. Let's find out where the Stonebreaker is coming in on. Number two. Now we can't come to number two because it's the same as the Rockerworks Rock Eater. So, 10. Gonna be close to the Tafeng. There we go. Those two are gonna be battling it out pretty early on, it seems. And last but not least, we have our Cave Crawler. At number six. So at number six, we're going to be right at the back here. Everyone is actually in view of each other. So these two will be seeing one another very quickly. And these two also have come onto the map in line of sight of one another. 
As one last bonus for the two characters last in the timeline, they also get to place these extraction markers, which allow you to extract extra TCM from the ground. Okay, so we're gonna go and place these ones now. Now, first of all, the Stonebreaker gets to place theirs. They cannot put it in a deployment hexagon, which is like this one here. This will be a deployment tile, so we cannot put it in there, but we have to put it wholly somewhere else. This looks like a good spot for the Stonebreaker, so I think they're gonna be placing it right there. Now, the cave crawler as well is probably gonna be looking at trying to come here. So we're gonna be placing that one there as well so that the cave crawler can get to that nice and quickly. Okay, so with that, the game is ready to begin. The storeworm doesn't start on the table, but he may come on quickly. We'll see when we draw the cards. So the very first thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be drawing our event card, finding out what's gonna happen first. So we have Cornucopia container. During this round, when drawing tool cards from a tool container, you may draw two cards instead of one. Oh my gosh, everyone's gonna get tooled up straight away. That's gonna be quite useful. And we have this marker here, which means the Mega Beast is appearing. Now, the Mega Beast will come on, uh, aiming towards the first player in the timeline. That will be the Rockerworks Rock Eater. So, if we find the Rock Eater, which is over here, we're gonna be placing the Storeworm in the nearest location and facing him. There we go. What we can see here is this is the facing of the Storeworm looking directly at the Rock Eater. With the Storeworm brought onto the table, then we have to also draw the card that's gonna tell us what the Storeworm's gonna be doing. Immobilize Prey. The Mega Beast moves towards the player tag in second to last position in the timeline, and if in range, performs the two slash attack. Okay, so second from last, that's the Stonebreaker, or Pan O. So it's gonna to try to get as close as possible to there. So we're gonna be moving all the way over to there. And it can see now these two tags here, but mainly it sees the Stonebreaker. It's not in range of its attack though, as all of its attack ranges, if we have a look over here, say that their attacks are a range of one, one, one. That means it will be one space away. Now, following the timeline, we're gonna be starting off with the Rockerworks. So let's have a look at the Rock Eater's card here. So this is the Tag's card. Here we have two orders. That basically gives it two turns to have a go in every game round, which they'll take in succession. Now, uh, a Tag can take two wounds before it's destroyed, so we have two wound markers ready to be used. But it also has some basic equipment that it'll always start off with uh, whenever it's destroyed and comes back, it'll always come back with these, which is a basic uh, shooting weapon called a Rattler and a built-in drill for close combat. We have all of their abilities along the bottom. We will use these and look at these as we play the game. But first of all, we're gonna be using one action first. So one order is gonna be spent and we're gonna start moving. Now, for every order, you start off with a move and then you'll have a following action. But before you announce that following action, we need to find out if anyone has a reaction to their first move. So, to move a tag, we're going to be using this little tool here. Okay, and this little tool will show us the measurements. For their very first move, they'll go all the way across from the beginning here, right up to the end of the red. So, I think what we're going to be trying to do is we're gonna be trying to race towards that um, supply crate over here. So, we'll put this down on the, on the floor to measure. And with that measured out, we would then move from the front of the base to the back of the base, where we can go. There we go. Okay, that was our move. Now, this time, anything that is in a uh, line of sight gets to have a reaction. What we can see over there is the cave dweller can see the uh, rock eater. So it's going to react. Now, the shooting weapon it has is pretty poor. Okay, this is the range ruler, and it can only go up to this range here, this second range segment. And this second range segment has a minus six to hit, which is really bad. Otherwise, this is its optimal range. 
not great. So I don't think we're going to be shooting with it. However, we will be able to do a dodge because we don't know. Maybe the Rock Eater wants to shoot at us. So we're going to dodge just in case. And if we succeed, it'll give us a chance to move. Luckily, the Rock Eater doesn't want to do that. The Rock Eater is going to move again. So let's just roll to see if the Cave Crawler is able to dodge. For its dodge, we're just doing a normal roll because no one's shooting at us or rolling against us. And we're going to be using this symbol here. This is the evade. You see the number is 13. All we need to do is on a D20, roll 13 or under, and we get to dodge. Let's see if it happens. Okay, we got an 11. Fantastic. That means we are able to dodge. When we dodge, we're going to be moving one segment on the range ruler here. So it's just going to give us a chance to get a little bit closer early on. There we go. So we dodged forward. However, the Rock Eater is going to want to try and get that crate. With the second move, we only go up to the yellow here. So from the green to the yellow. And that gives us enough space to move up and get in contact with both of these things here. Now, that's really good because if we're in contact with an extraction point, we're going to get one TCM for that. So let's take one TCM and we're going to be giving it to our Rock Eater there. Yay, excellent start. Now, in this turn as well, we get to draw two tool cards every time we go to a supply crate. All you need to do to open a supply crate is to end a move action in silhouette contact. So that means base to base contact with the supply crate there, which we have. Fantastic. So we're going to draw a couple of tool cards. And from this deck here, first tool is a monkey wrench. This is going to give us a plus three to hit in our melee attacks and a damage of 14. Okay, so not too bad. Nothing fantastic, nothing spectacular, but it's a pretty good start. Not too bad. We won't complain. So it gives us one initial equipment that we can equip there. But we get to do it one more time. Let's draw a card. Ooh, and we got a Panzerfaust. Okay, this is a one-time use card, but it's very, very powerful. What we'll see here is it's got an excellent range. Okay, at close range is pretty bad. Minus three, minus three, but at long range, it's a zero modifier. However, if we actually shoot out of range, something very far away, we're going to get plus three to hit on the attack. This weapon also uses special ammo, AP plus explosive. AP is going to half the armor value of your target, and explosive means that if you hit it, they have to make three armor saves. Very, very powerful stuff. We're definitely going to equip that one, and now our Rock Eater is fully armed and ready for combat. Okay, that was its first action finished. The Rock Eaters finished their move, however, the Mega Beast needs to react. Now, it wasn't able to react directly, so now it's going to basically re reintroduce its position to aim at the current active player. That is here. Now, it sets itself up to be able to see the active player, which it can, and also any other players that it can try and see as well. It's, if we want to know what the line of sight is, you just come across here and you can have a look here. This will mark the line of sight. So if you imagine the front of the base is at the very top where the red is, and this large yellow bracket here, this shows you the arc that your line of sight is. So we can see where the arrow is at the front of the Mega Beast. That's the same as the little white arrow that was on the front of the Mega Beast's information. And then we can extrapolate its line of fire. We basically follow, follow this line across there and follow this line across there, right across there. So we can also we follow that, see the Tafeng as well. However, it doesn't do any action. It doesn't attack or do anything else as it just readjusted its position. However, this next order for the Rock Eater is going to activate the Mega Beast this time. So what is the Rock Eater going to do? Very good question. We could turn and try to attack the Mega Beast. However, we'll turn our backs to 
the cave crawler, which means we won't be able to react to the cave crawler when it comes attacking us. Also, we probably want to prevent the cave crawler from trying to get too much equipment right now, otherwise it might blow us up as well. We might just have to tank a little bit of what the mega beast throws at us whilst attacking the cave crawler as well. So we're going to go ahead and do a move directly into the cave crawler and we're going to try and try to get ourselves out of range of the mega beast for the future. Okay, we're not quite there. It got blocked by the building, but we're now in silhouette contact with the cave crawler. Okay, let's see what the AROs are. So the cave crawler now uh, makes his reaction. He's going to react by doing a close combat attack on the rock eater. However, the mega beast is also going to be attacking the rock eater as well. Rock eater is going to then decide to attack the cave crawler. So let's have a look at the rock eater for the close combat attack. First of all, we need to see if we hit the opponent. We're going to be using the monkey wrench here. So this symbol here shows that it's one burst. That means we roll one die. Okay, and the number that we need to roll to hit is a 15. We're going to be rolling one die, trying to get 15 or under to hit the cave crawler. Now the cave crawler is simultaneously going to be doing the same thing. And again, this time though, uh, we're gonna be looking at this equipment, the built-in drill. It's also got an ammo of one burst here and a 15 to hit. So it's a very, very fair fight. They're both rolling one die each and the highest score within the limit of 15 wins. So it plays out a little bit like blackjack on die. So first of all, let's roll for the Rockerworks Rock Eater. And they got a 15, which is the perfect score. That means it's a critical as well. Let's see if the Cave Crawler can do better. Pretty good roll of nine, but it's not good enough to beat the 15. Now because our target number was 15 and we rolled a 15, we got a critical success. That means instead of one hit just going through, we hit two times with our monkey wrench. The rock eater has now critically hit the cave crawler with the monkey wrench at a damage of 14, two times because it was a critical hit. The cave crawler now needs to roll an armor save. So we can see the cave crawler's armor is four. The cave crawler's got two armor saves to make. They've got to get 15 or more to beat the damage of 14, and they can add four to each of these rolls. Let's see what we get. All right, the 15 plus four is 19, that's a safe. 10 plus four is 14, it's just not quite. So the cave crawler is gonna take one damage. Here we go, bosh. Now, because it took damage, the rock eater for causing that damage is also going to get one TCM. There we go, lovely jubbly. But we're not finished yet because now the store worm is going to attack. And because all of these things happen simultaneously, even though the tag is over here, the storeworm attacked when the tag was here and very, very close. So let's see what happens next. So for this, we're gonna be drawing a reaction card here. And this tells us what type of attack it is. We then refer to the Mega Beast card and we can see that this is the action, right? It's got a range of one and the miner receives a 14 damage attack. It's an automatic hit, they just need to roll an armor save. So very similarly, they need to roll 15 or more, but they get to add four to their armor. That's not enough. So also the Rocker Works Rock Eater also takes one point of damage. No one scores any TCM as the Mega Beast was the thing that did the damage. All right, and that right there is the Rock Eater's turn over. Next in the timeline is the Tough Fang. The Tough Fang is going to try and make a move. It's not gonna to go towards the Stonebreaker. We're gonna try and be a little bit safer. After seeing some of the action over there, I think they've realized that mm, maybe that's not for them. They're gonna try and get some items without messing with anybody else. So we just measure there. That's one move and we can get to about there. 
We're gonna be turning the body so that we can see everybody. Make sure that we don't have our back turned. We have a 180 degree line of fire, so we don't want to keep our back open to anyone to shoot us or stab us in the back. With that move there, the Mega Beast was able to see the action. So there's gonna be an ARO from the Mega Beast. The Stonebreaker could also see this action here, it was in line of fire. So it's also going to take an action. So they're gonna announce first. Stonebreaker can't really do anything except dodge to get a free move. The Mega Beast, however, is going to move. And it will move up to here. Okay, however, its ARO range is one. It's not gonna be able to actually attack anyone or anything at the moment. The Tafeng does want to move to try and get some equipment. So let's see if it's in range. Yes, it is. And we'll move up to here. Okay, let's also do the dodge move for the Stonebreaker. It was a failure as we needed a 13. That was a 15 and went over the number that we were targeting. Because the Tafeng is touching the crate, they're gonna get two tool cards. Let's see what we get. First of all, we've got the Tricone. Now what's really good about this is the damage isn't particularly high at 13. However, it does have a burst of three. So you're rolling three dice to hit. That's pretty cool. We're gonna get one more card. We've got a laser drill. So we've also got a shooting weapon here, which has a very high damage at 15 and a burst of one. Right, enemy tags are gonna count as having a zero armor. This thing cuts right through everything like butter. So that's gonna be pretty nasty. Its range isn't particularly fantastic, but it does do long range, which is pretty good. The stallworm is going to react to the Tafeng. So let's find out what happens. All right, now in this one here, Every miner in the hexagon of the target miner receives three 13 attacks. That's three armor saves needing a 14. Remember we can plus four to each of these rolls for the armor that we have. All right, the 12 is a save as the total number comes to 16. The 14 is a save because the total number comes to 18. The one is a fail. So one wound goes through on the tough thing. With the next order, the Tafeng is going to charge the Storeworm. And we're gonna be running over and around to try and catch it on its side there. Uh, alas, the Storeworm is going to ARO, so the Storeworm is going to turn and attack anyway. We have two things to resolve that happen at the same time. There's gonna be the Storeworm's attack on the Tafeng and the Tafeng's attack on the Storeworm. These will be happening at the same time, but we'll work them out separately. Let's do our damage to the Storeworm first. Now, because of our Tricone that we carry, we're gonna be making three attacks. All we need to do is hit this worm. If we do that, each hit counts as a wound. We don't have to roll for damage, it will be automatic. So, rolling three dice with a target number of 15 to hit. 15 or under will be a hit. Okay, two misses, that's pretty unlucky. And one hit there. Well, that one hit will do one damage. So we take one t Bazaar from the health track of the Mega Beast, and we're gonna be giving that one to the Tafeng. There we go, he's on the scoreboard. However, it wasn't as successful as he'd hoped, and now it is going to be the Storeworm's turn. The Storeworm is attacking with the two slashes. Now, that's not too bad. This is only a damage eight attack, but it is going to put this slowed condition onto the Tafeng. Now, every time the Tafeng moves, He's only gonna be able to move up to the green for each move he makes. However, if he decides to idle and stand still for one of his move actions, he'll be able to discard this token and go back to normal as he resets his machine. Damage, eight attack, 10, easy save. No problem there. Okay, that is turn over for the tough thing. Turn three, we have the Stonebreaker. The Stonebreaker is now all alone over here, having no problems whatsoever. 
So I think what we're going to be doing is just running straight up to try and get the extraction point and also the crate. We're going to be scoring one point of TCM for the stone breaker. We're going to draw two tool cards thanks to this event here. Magnetic servo engines. This gives a plus three to the evade skill. So now when trying to dodge, we plus three to this skill. So that becomes 16. He's gonna be very, very good at dodging. We'll draw another card and we've got servo powered engines. And this one is also plus one burst to all attacks. So we don't have any special weapons. However, our basic weapons are becoming stronger. So now each of these are gonna have a burst of two. You'll be rolling two dice when using either of these pieces of equipment. That's not too bad. So rather than getting new equipment, we've just boosted the equipment we've got and we've got a better evade. Quite survivable now. Let's see if he actually is or not. At the moment, nothing is in line of sight, so there are no AROs. Now with the second part of the skill, what we can do is we can make a close combat attack on the extraction point and for each successful hit we have we can also score an extra TCM. Now we're at burst two we can roll two die for the extraction point and see if we can score some extra TCM. Both of those are under 15 so they both hits that means two more TCM for the stonebreaker putting them in the lead. Now because the storeworm was out of line of sight it didn't react straight away but now it's going to be on the move and it's going to move itself to look this way. So now with our second order, we're going to charge in, use the Mega Beast to cover ourselves from the other tags, and we're going to make an attack. Now, of course, the Storeworm is also going to attack back, but we will attack first. So again, a burst of two, and we just got to get a 15 or under. So we're attacking from the front. If we look at this, this shows us where the armor is on the stalwart. At the very front is the red. So if we look at the red number, it's an eight. Under 15, because that's the skill uh, that we need to roll, and over eight to get through the stalwart's defenses. Okay, we didn't quite get through anything there. So we get zero TCM for that one. Now it's the stalwart's turn to try and attack and it's going to be doing its basic attack up here of a damage 14. Let's roll to save. We need 15 or more. A 6 plus the 4 is 10. That means we take one point of damage. Ha, huh, maybe not so great. Okay, and that is the turn over for the Stonebreaker. Finally, we have a Cave Crawler in the line. The Cave Crawler is now going to get a turn. So let's just go ahead and try to charge forward and get into a position here. There we go. Now we're in contact with the extraction point so we can score one TCM for that. And we get to draw two cards from the toolbox. We get ourselves a rifle, fantastic, uh oh. Sometimes a bad thing happens. We've got I'm Afraid Dave. Immediately resolve and then discard this card. Draw one event and resolve it. If the Mega Beast is not on the game table, ignore the icon. Place one unit in your cargo zone. So a new event is going to take place, which is shooting attacks cause plus two during this round. That is now the new rule for the rest of this round. And we get to put one TCM into our cargo zone. Within ARO, only the Rockerworks Rockita can ARO. Now knowing the cave dweller has a rifle, it's probably gonna be best to dodge. If we try and shoot, I don't think we can beat them. We're in close range, which is not optimal for a rifle. So our to hit is minus three. That means we're gonna be rolling three dice and we need nine or less to hit. We got zero, all of them well over the score that we needed. Now the Rock Eater still gets to do his dodge roll, so he needs 13 or less on one die, which he makes, so now he can move. So that was a pretty poor turn for the Cave Crawler. However, at the end of that order, the 
Mega Beast needs to move. So it's going to move to the active player, which is the cave crawler, and try to see as many other tags as possible. This position gives him line of sight to the active player, which is here, and also gives him a viewpoint there. You cannot see the stone breaker because this hex blocks line of sight. However, the cave crawler still has another order and this wonderful rifle to try out as well. Let's try and give ourselves some distance as much as possible from this mega beast and these other players. It's looking a little bit hairy for the cave crawler right now. So we're going to try and move away from everything and we're going to get over there. About here. The Rockerworks Rockita can have a reaction and their reaction is going to be to try and shoot. Where he started, he was in the short range. So he's doing a short range shot when the cave crawler was here. Obviously, there'll be an ARO from the storeworm as well, which will be an attack with a plus one range. So he's definitely going to be attacking the cave crawler. The cave crawler gets to choose how to shoot at his opponents. Now, because he's got burst three, he can actually split the shots a little bit. So he's going to shoot the rock eater two times and he's going to shoot the storeworm one time. And because it's his turn and he did a movement, he gets 360 degree sight whilst moving and being able to shoot at anything he would like to. Anything on ARO only has a 180 degree line of fire. We know that the Rock Eater had a short range. So at short range, he's on plus three to hit. That makes it a 15 that he needs to roll. 19 is a miss. Oh well, better luck next time. Now the Cave Crawler is choosing to shoot two shots out of the three shots he has at the Rock Eater. And he's going to need a 12, but let's just check the range. When the cave crawler moved, he can choose wherever he likes on that route to be the point that he's shooting from. He's going to be shooting from here. And that is an optimal range for him. That means we have a zero modifier on his range there. So he needs to roll a 12. However, the rock eater is in cover because he's in silhouette contact with this building here. He also gets a minus three to hit against the rock eater. So again, we need nines or less. One is a hit. The rifle is damage 13. Rock Eater's armor is four. So he'll be rolling one die, trying to roll over 13, and he can plus four. Let's see how he does. One, that's not good. So he's gonna be taking a wound. The Rock Eater already has a wound on him. So this is going to destroy him. Now, with him destroyed, he's going to be removed from the table. But before we do that, we've got lots of equipment that he's losing now. So we've got to take this equipment away from him and we've got to place it on his panel here. So we remove this token, we put any equipment he had on here and he loses half of his TCM. That goes on here. So someone else could go and collect it if they wanted to. This is now going in base contact with the model and we remove the model from the game. And with the model removed, the tag's gonna come back pretty much instantaneously, so we can go straight into rolling for that. A 20. That means he's going to be appearing, this time, over here. South. Far away from his equipment, oh dear. And because the cave crawler did some damage, he's also going to score one TCM for causing the one kill wound that he needed to get rid of the Rock Eater. Now it's the Storeworm's turn to react. He turns towards the Cave Crawler and we make a regular attack, a damage 14 hit. Does the Cave Crawler survive? 13, he's safe. No problems, okay. And that is turn one finished. At the end of turn one, we can see that the cave crawler is just getting ahead in the lead with five TCM, uh, quickly followed by the Stonebreaker with four. And the Tafeng and the Rock Eater both have one left, and also the Rock Eater's items are on the table for someone to take away. 
All right, we're gonna go into round two now. So with round two, we're gonna be drawing another event card. Here we go. And our event, event is Rubble Heap. Miners in the warehouse zones must pass an evade roll to avoid receiving the slowed state. So we can check what type of zones places are with these little icons in the corners here. Cave Dweller is in a zone. This one here is a supply zone. So we're gonna have to roll an evade to see if we survive. They need a 13 or less. Three, we're okay. No slowed state for you. Right, let's see what happens with the Storeworm. Every miner within one of an inside hex must pass an evade roll to avoid receiving 14 damage. Okay, anyone within one of these spaces? You're within one, you're within one, and you're within one. So first of all, for the stone breaker. 20, that is a great save. Perfect save, no problems right there. Cave crawler, 12 total, that's not enough. He takes a wound. What that means though for the cave crawler is, <gasps> He is destroyed. Oh no. So for him as well, he's gonna lose his rifle. And that is gonna come here. But maybe even more costly, he's gonna lose two TCM as well. He's gonna be placing that just next to him there. And he comes off the table. Let's just roll for the Tafeng. See what happens to him. A two, also no good. And the Tafeng is also wounded and will be destroyed. Loses all that lovely equipment that he managed to find. Oh my. Luckily, however, he doesn't lose his TCM as he's only got one. Go there. Take you off. Let's bring back the cave crawler. Where is he gonna be? 20. We can't go there because there's already another model. Not bad. You can go and steal some stuff there from the Rockerworks Rock Eater. Now for the Tuffing. Not too bad. Pretty close to where you were left, so you can always get your items back. Rock Eater is here behind the stalwart. We'll be running up to the equipment. Boom. We get ourselves a jackhammer. A very good close combat weapon which has explosive ammo which for every hit will do three damage with the rest of the action we're just going to move and we'll just move a little bit into cover there we have one more action to do but this time the storeworm has turned around to face us feeling brave and feeling strong we're going to charge forward into combat with the mega beast we're going to attack the mega beast is it a hit? Five is a good roll, but it's not good enough, so it doesn't get through the armor. Stormworm attacks back. The damage 14 attack, which we fail. Another point of damage on the Rock Eater. Tafeng is now in play. I'm gonna run forward to the supply crates. We are going to trigger the Stonebreaker's ARO. Stonebreaker doesn't really have anything to attack with, so the Stonebreaker is going to elect to dodge. Let's see if they dodge. Nine, they do, which they're going to move a little bit down to here. Now, the Tafeng is in base contact with the item box, so we get a tool, process cargo, lovely. So we'll put that on there. And with our second action, we're going to use the processed cargo to get ourselves five TCM units from the pool into the cargo zone. That is a very powerful card. One, two, three, four, five. Five TCM, just like that. And with one fell swoop, putting the Tafeng into the lead. Tafeng's second order is going to be to move up and reclaim their items. The Stonebreaker is going to do another dodge. We're going to be moving to get a little closer to action. Both items back. Both the tricone and the laser drill. We're just going to turn to face. 
Store worm is also going to move. So store worm moves again round to here. That was the tough end. Next is going to be the stone breaker. Now the stone breaker has repositioned themselves rather well here. What the stone breaker is going to do with the store worm's back turned is charge into it and make an attack. Thanks to their plus one burst of the attacks, they're going to be rolling two dice and rolling 15 or less to score some damage. Okay, one was a miss, but one was a hit. Not too bad. We score one, t four, mine's core. There we go. Now, of course, at the end of that turn though, we're going to be turning around to face our enemy. Stonebreaker now gets its second turn, but now the worm is facing it. So this time we are going to be moving and trying to take on maybe one of the tags. We're going to make a move down to here to face the rock eater. And the cave crawler does see over the box there. They'll get a free ARO as well. So the cave crawler will try to dodge. And they failed. What is the Rockerworks Rock Eater going to do? Well, it doesn't have the greatest of weapons, so it's going to try and do a dodge. As the Rock Eater is dodging, the Stonebreaker is gonna try their luck with a shot. They're in range of the second band, that's a minus six, but they do get to roll two die. All right, one of them does hit, one of them misses. However, because it's a face-to-face, -face, a rocker works, Rocky tickets to roll their dodge. A nine, a nine beats the two, so he successfully dodges and doesn't get shot. And get into position here. Now, this time the Stormworm is going to attack. Let's see what happens. So this is gonna be a strength eight hit. Six plus four, 10, we're safe. Mine crawler is going to move forward in base contact with the Rockerworks items and then pick them up. So he takes the TCM and he takes the weapons as well. A monkey wrench and a Panzerfaust. Now with that move, we've got our AROs. Now the Mega Beast is going to ARO. We can find out what they're going to do. It's going to be a double attack. The stone breaker is going to dodge and the cave crawler is also going to dodge. So first of all, we have the stone breaker. 14. 14 is... Now we have the stone breaker. That's going to be a successful dodge. We have the cave crawler. 15, that's a fail. So it's going to be jumping over here. However, its attacks are out of range, so it won't be attacking today. And that is the end of the second round. And we can see that the Tafeng has now secured a lead. All players must discard one equipped card of their choosing. Ooh dear, everyone's got to lose a card. So, Monkey Wrench, gone. Plus three, gone. Plasma Drill, gone. Oh no, you've got, to choose. you've got to lose the jackhammer, which is a fantastic item. Oh dear. Now, the Mega Beast is going to regeneration. The Mega Beast recovers up to two damage, then remove the Mega Beast from the game table. At the end of the round, put it back in the same place and with the same facing it had when removed. There we go. Place this facing token to show this is where it was and it regenerates its two damage. It's now back up to full health again, oh crikey. Okay, so let us begin. First of all, Rockerworks. He's gonna idle to try and open up the crate and get two extra slots. Oh my, that'd be nice if we had any equipment. The Stonebreaker is going to be shooting. The Rock Eater is now going to be dodging. <laughs> oh dear. 
two shot burst at plus six, uh, sorry, two shot burst at plus three, it's 15s. Okay, one hit, evade at 13. One is a success, but it doesn't beat the 11, so he actually takes a hit. One. 17, safe, no problems there. Oh, I forgot actually, we've got an ARO here. We forgot about it, so that's it. That one didn't get an ARO. All right, but this time we're gonna idle again and try and open the box. Well, we get plus three uh, wounds. That's gonna be handy. We're going to dodge with this one. And this one's going to shoot again. And we're going to try and shoot as well. Let's get the Tafeng's dodge out of the way. And we're just sneaking around there. Two shots. Both hit. One shot. Also a hit. And is better, so it wins. One save. Takes a wound and is destroyed. We lose two that there. Off we go. See where we come back in. And we're over here. We're doing one damage. Rockworks gets one point there. We're going to just move a little bit to here. There are no AROs. I'm going to open up the crate and we get an EM refiner. We're going to prepare for this mega beast to come back and Try and fight it a little bit. We do have line of sight. We don't have line of sight. Stonebrook is gonna dodge forward with the ARO. It does so. We're going to run forward and get in contact with the extraction point there. there we go. So we're gonna use the tricone here to do three attacks. We also get one for making contact. And then three dice. There we go. Almost there. Next is the Stonebreaker. Stonebreaker is going to move to here and collect the item. These two are going to dodge. Going to put all three shots into the rock eater over here. So first of all, let's see if we do a dodge with the cave crawler. Cave crawler's dodge, it's a fail. Rock eater's dodge is a 10, that's pretty good. 12s. Okay, we've got one, two, three hits. This one is canceled by the previous 10, but these are two hits and one of them's a critical, so that's three hits and three saves needed for the Rock Eater. Damage 13, so we need 14s or more, and we plus four to the roll. That's two points of damage. Boom, boom, and you are gone. You drop in that there, and off you come. And that's two TCM for the kill. Going to the bottom's core. Here you go. Run forward, get in contact with both of these. One more TCM for making contact with the extraction point and a tool. It's Panzerfaust, which is great. Cave Crawler is going to try and dodge. This is going to be, actually no, we're pretty close. So let's actually shoot back just within the short range. Uh, there's only one roll for the cave caller and it's a one. Three shots and three hits. That's three saves for the cave caller. Three saves. The cave caller is kaput again and he's gone. Losing the Panzerfaust to TCM as well. Okay. Cave caller is gone. Two TCM for you. Only two more needed. Cave Crawler comes back into play right by there, so I can try and take a little bit of a revenge shot perhaps. And it is the Cave Crawler's turn. If we look at the angle of fire of 
the stone breaker, he cannot see the cave crawler. So the cave crawler can make a free attack from behind. It's going to be a full move to get back behind. This is going to be a free shot, just in close range. So it's on a plus three, we need 15. Nine will do it. Save. Doesn't save. And we've already got one wound. So the second wound goes on. That destroys the stone breaker. One TCM goes to the cave crawler. This one that was already on here, this is lost because nobody claimed it. And now we're gonna be putting on a new equipment stash. Now there is 10, so we're gonna be putting five. One, two, three, four, five. This one is now removed and replaced here. Let's see where you come back. Just where the other guy came from. That's the end of the round. So now we're gonna be bringing back the Mega Beast. The same facing it had before, just there. Next round, player in second last position in the timeline moves to first position. So this is our new timeline and how it looks. Mega Beast. Mega Beast moves towards the player tag in last position in the timeline and if in range performs an attack. Will make an attack as well. To try and see as many as possible. We'll turn it there. That's the best position for the Mega Beast. It's just a strength eight damage attack. So the save should be pretty easy. And it was. Round starts with the Stone Breaker. We're going to be running towards and grabbing the equipment on the floor there. Bosh. That will give two TCM back and give us a Panzerfaust as well. Cave Crawler is going to dodge, and so is the Stone Breaker. Cave Crawler's dodge is a 12, that's a pass, and the other dodge. Is a 19, it's a fail. To here, the stone breaker is also going to run forward to get into the zones of these two here. That's an automatic TCM for touching the extraction point. Also draw a tool card. And it's a jackhammer. So the cave crawler here is going to shoot and the stone breaker is actually gonna try and ignore it and do some damage to the extraction marker. See if we can get some extra resources. So first of all, do we get hit? A one, yes we do. That was maybe a mistake. So let's do a save, a one, that's not a save. So the stone breaker takes one damage, oops. We get one attack, but with explosive ammo. So we, if we get this success, we'll get three TCM. 11 is a success. Now, so close to finishing. Also, the Mega Beast is going to make an attack because they're in line of sight. So the Mega Beast's attack is, oh, crikey. Okay, every miner in the hexagon of the target miner receives three 13 attacks. Oh no, that's pretty bad. Okay, first of all, for the mine's core, let's see what happens. Three hits. Oh my gosh, pretty good. Um, all of them saved. Now the cave crawler. Cave crawler, pretty good, pretty good. Eight, 12, uh, that doesn't quite save you from the 13 damage attack. So that's one damage to the cave crawler there, bosh. Okay, so now we have the rock eater and the rock eater really needs to deal with the tough thing. We're gonna be running forward to try and get around the corner here. The tough thing does not see it happening. So we will get to shoot them in the back. One shot at short range, 15 or less. 15 is a critical hit. So that's two saves for the Tafeng. Two saves and one saved and one missed. So that's one wound. We take a wound, boom. And move up to here to see them both. We're going to, with our second action, move right up into close combat. This time, we'll be able to fight back. I think we're gonna be going with the Tricone. So the Tricone is gonna be fighting back with three dice there. Okay, that's gonna be pretty nasty. 
All right, two sevens are pretty good. The 16 is a miss. And our fight back is a 12. That actually beats it. So the Rocker Works Rocky to actually wins. And we're gonna then apply this to get plus three to the damage. Okay, let's see if we save. No, we do not save. So the Tafeng has been destroyed. Boom, boom. I'm gonna be dropping this right about there. And away we go. Clutch move right there. The Storeworm gets to attack. The Storeworm's attack is just a straight up attack at 14 damage. Okay, let's do a save. 10 plus four is 14, not enough to save, so one damage. One damage is taken, bush. Tafan comes back on at number one, comes back into play at number one. It is now the Tafang's turn. The Tafang is now behind the cave crawler. So we're gonna go and charge it. Okay, so we can make a nice big move right up to there. We can get a reaction out of this guy here who is going to do a dodge. The dodge is successful and dodge onto here, kind of block anyone getting that special spot there. The Tafeng is going to get a free shot in the back of the cave crawler. Seven's a hit. Twenty's a save. Is he going to idle there and try again? Missed. The Storeworm then moves and faces all three of these guys. Facing the Stonebreaker, he charges in to close combat and we're gonna take a free shot from here, and then these two are gonna fight here. So let's just do the free shot first, see how that goes, does it hit? 15 is a hit, it's a critical in fact. Two saves, neither of them saves, so he's going to be killed, um, and one TCM will be awarded to Yu Ching. Now, let's do the close combat fight. So 15 to hit. There we go, it's a hit. And on the other side, a three is a miss. So does, do they both get taken out? Six, that is a damage. So Stonebreaker also gets taken out as well. And one TCM is awarded to Mines Core there. Cave Crawler, you're taken out. So this is taken out and it's just a couple of TCM there for you. All right, there we go. We're gonna drop that just down there and we'll remove you out of the way. There we go. Okay, Stonebreaker is also destroyed, so we'll remove their cards. All of this gets lost again, and now it's replaced with these new cards, and we've got 11, so again, it's gonna be five. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Let's see where the Stonebreaker comes back on. 20. Be back here now. Maybe over here now. It's now kind of blocked the scores back again at the end of that turn there. Our next round has us strike first, strike hard, no mercy. Close combat attacks have plus one burst this round. Now our beast has unstable underground galleries. So in the same order as the timeline, all miners in the hexagons adjacent to the mega beast must perform a respawn role and place themselves in the corresponding positions. Okay, so that's just the Tafeng. And the Tafeng appears at 15. And 15 is over here now, tucked all the way back here. Let us get started then. We're going to be starting off with turn one in Mines Court, which is the Stonebreaker here. We're going to just run straight ahead there. We're going to collect this, which is going to give us one and also these two items as well. So we have an extra slot, and we have a TCM coating. We're also in contact with a crate, so let's open up the crate. Discard this card after use, place five units from the pool into your cargo zone. Fantastic, we're gonna put that right there. And so with our second action, we're gonna just do that. That puts us at 12, which is puts us into end game, possibly, if we're able to hold on till the end of the game. We also should have been uh, doing your dodges. I forgot about that. Let's see if you dodge. 
Yes, you do. There we go. Storeworm is going to turn around this way. We're running six back here. And reactions are going to have to be just a dodge because we can't really do anything else. Dodge works. So we're going to move up here for now. And then your move is just going to stick you right behind that building there. Okay, now the Mega Beast does get to attack though, as he did see it all happen and unfold. And it's just an eight attack. And it's going to put the slow condition on uh, you. And so let's see if the attack goes through. It does not. You're going to move forward and try and just kind of tuck into there. That's going to claim this four for you, plus these two weapons. But also we get to draw a tool and we've got the EM cannon. We're going to replace the EM uh, refiner with the EM cannon. So we have our shooting weapon. That was your move there. I forgot to do your dodge because I was trying to rush it too fast. So let's just do your dodge now. 11 was a dodge. We move up to here. So you're going to basically just move up to here where you're in contact with the extraction thing as well. Tough thing, we saw it all happen, is also going to try and dodge. So we get to about there. We're going to try and shoot the store worm, the EM cannon. Gives us two shots against it. The range we are at, we're on plus three, so we need 15s to hit. Okay, the 12 is a hit and a success. So that's one damage that we take off of the Storeworm and we give to our pool there. Storeworm also gets to do an attack now. Okay, um, it's plus one range, but that doesn't really matter. And we're gonna take we're trying to try and tank that damage. Should be no problem. 19, we're fine. No problem whatsoever. So we're gonna charge forward, basically. Um, and our Rock Eater's reaction is going to be to shoot you. Cave Crawler's reaction is also going to be to shoot. Uh, it's, at a, it's at a longer range and we're gonna shoot at you as well. So let's take the free shot from the Cave Crawler first. It's a bit of a difficult one. It's a miss, that's no problem there. First of all, our shot. Seven is a hit, that's good. And four is a hit, but it's lower than seven, so the seven wins. Okay, let's see if we save. A one is not a save, so Rockworks is destroyed. Boom, boom, boom. One. Here, right behind, right behind him. There, Mega Beast does a plus three, oh, plus three damage attack with that. That's that's crazy. And that's like three hits at thirteen. Okay, you are destroyed. There's no chance. So yeah, you do take one damage, but that was pretty good going. Okay, so now we'll go to your turn. You're going to be moving up, just up to there. All you can really try to do is perhaps shoot the dude in the back. 14 is a hit at this range. It's not too bad. And the save is not there. So we take the damage and we're destroyed. One point of TCM goes to our mine crawler there. We have a reaction here as we turn around and it is an attack. So it does, oh my gosh, plus three damage. That's, that's still 11, that's not too bad. We're fine, we're fine. Gonna be stopping just short there. Okay, and that finishes the round there. We've got one person on 12 there, so they are the winner. So, well done. Hiding out in the back here. You won our game of Tag Ray, fantastic. Good job.